All right, so let's have a look at what we were wanting um, from our 2020 cohort, done in 2019, obviously, Year 12 Chemistry Secondhand Data Analysis Task. Um, so it's worth 26 marks overall. Um, had to be done black pen, all that sort of crap. Things you're used to. Uh, we did have periodic tables and so forth. So the whole concept of the paper was based around the contamination at Minamata Bay and having a look at some fictionalized values um, looking at a mercury one chloride uh, ion dissociating in water so something weird happened with our numbers we actually gave you um, a solid here which was actually much too large it should have been an order of magnitude or two smaller, but we wanted numbers to be easier to work with, and we wanted you to draw conclusions based on the data you had available. So that didn't affect anything there. Um, and here we get our first question. So we wanted you to write, and this question was done reasonably well. Um, it was it was not reasonably well. It was done well. Uh, we wanted you to write a. There we go, sorry, so I have to write a text box here to write over top of this. Um, let's go for all that in front of text, okay. Here, what we wanted was we wanted you to write the KSP um, expression, so the equilibrium cost expression, or KQ, it wouldn't have mattered. So basically, we we're looking for this is what we were looking for, and we gave you one for having the, the mercury and the chloride ions there um, without the have pr presence of the solid, and we gave you one for the correct exponents at the top. The net ionic equation, uh, similar story, in that what we were after was the... Um, this was actually done quite poorly, to be honest. This is one of the more poorly done questions in the paper. And we'll have to have a look at why that was when we get back to class. Now, we didn't give um, points for states on this one, uh, but you got points for including the right part. If you had the right components and something extra thrown in there, um, we gave you, so if you had an ionic equation, but not the net ionic equation, we gave you half a mark. Because you know something about ionic equations. We weren't keen on punishing you for no reason. And I think from this point onwards, I might actually stop going through what the actual answers are. Um, so, for example, this one here, calculate the number of moles. Because after this, it becomes a lot of um, carryover error. Um, so this is worth three marks. And these are the different places we gave you marks. So it's calculate the number of moles of mercury ions present as mercury carbonate and it was as mercury carbonate that was the tricky part um, we gave one for rec for calculating the moles of mercury carbonate you did this using um, the moles of ma moles equals mass over molar mass of the solid up here then we gave you one for recognizing that um, the moles of uh, mercury ions and one for sig figs uh, we gave you one if you just used the ratio, but you couldn't get all three marks unless you actually got a correct answer. Um, so yeah, so sig figs, which was four, due to what you had on your periodic table, um, one for working out the moles of mercury, one for working out the moles of mercury carbonate. So this question was quite significant, um, four marks, the next one's worth four marks as well, and you were expected to calculate the KSP, or KQ, of the mercury chloride in the original sample. So, this required you to use the values from the previous question, in particular the moles of mercury, uh, and we needed you to calculate that to by dividing it by the volume, so 0 0.150, there was a mark for that. There was a mark for recognizing again the KSP relationship. There was a mark for recognizing that mercury has a one-to-one -one relationship to chlorine, um, and therefore the KSP is the mercury value to the power of four, or basically one for solving it, right? We never took marks for significant figures or units on this one. And then we move to the next question. This question was 
I thought going to be the hardest question in the paper. And it was there. It was up there. But it was not at all seen as the hardest question. So there was one. There's half. So total out of four. And you couldn't get all four unless you got the answer right. But first off, there was a half a mark available for understanding simply the impact of a common ion. Okay. If you could show that it would change the solubility. Like if that's all you could do, fine. That counted for half a mark. Um, you got one for recognizing that chloride was a common ion and showing that, demonstrating that in your working. It's the way you should always show all your working too, by the way. Um, one for treating chloride concentration as um, 0 0.5515 plus X. Um, because the, unless you had, unless you made an error in your calculations, which happened to some people, and your concentration of chlorine was so, so low that you could just treat the concentration of chloride ions as 0.5515, but you'll see that on your individual responses. Um, there's one for treating the mercury concentration correctly and then one solving for it. Um, so yeah, so four marks available for you and that's what they were. Uh, and here, we'll obviously give you all these answers when you come back, but this is just the work through for the holidays. Um, okay, so based on the answer from the previous question, explain where they're primarily found. Now, because we gave you such a large number, they were your mercury ions were largely soluble. So most reasonable answer was that they were found in the water column. And they were found in the water column because, so you had to, one for, the, for that and one for the justification. Uh, they were found in the water column because they were highly soluble. If you found because of your calculations, you had a really insoluble um, mercury, then that's fine. In that case, you would have had to say it was in the seabed and justify that it was largely insoluble. So the ions exist as, as mercury chloride in the seabed. Um, a lot of this, a lot of this one, people kind of forgot what, and for the rest of it onwards, actually, they kind of forgot what the purpose of the reaction of the experiment in the first place was. So a lot of people were talking about um, mercury carbonate, and that happened pretty much from here onwards with some people. All right, so this one here, this is a, I really enjoyed this question, and it was answered fairly well. Generally, most people, not most people, but a lot of people got some marks on it, and we'll go through what they are. So the dissolution of mercury chloride is endothermic. That's one of the keywords here. Um, explain the impact on KSP. This is where it fell down for most people if they didn't get full marks in terms of the Chalier's principle on increasing the temperature of the sample. So if we increase the temperature of the sample, um, we need to recognize that as an endothermic reaction, heat is consumed in the forward reaction. There's one mark. So if you talk about heat being used up. Identifying, um, according to the Chalier's principle, that the reaction favors the products. That's important. You need to do that. If you did that, that um, led to it going forward. And you also needed to, and this is where most people, so, sorry. So because heat is, is consumed, if we increase the heat, it will then be consumed to reduce the stress, um, which will favor the products. You then need to talk about how KSP gets larger or increases. And this is the part where most people fell down. They were happy to talk about what happens to the KSP, sorry, what happens to the equilibrium position or the concentration, but without talking about the KSP. So you need to say that KSP as products increased, um, it got larger. Now, um, this one here, identify a potential source of error, not a mistake. We, we weren't looking for mistakes here um, and explain the impact on the calculated concentration of mercury ions. Okay, one for a sensible error. That makes sense. Okay. Um, one for identifying its impact, did it increase or decrease it? And one for explaining the impact. So why did it cause it to go up? Now, our last two questions in this paper and how we marked it. Okay. Describing the nature... So today we're developing materials called blah, blah, blah. So you asked to describe the nature of Minamata Bay as an open, closed, isolated system. It is an open system. And you could justify that by not saying that energy's able to leave because open systems have energy going in and out anyway. So do closed, so do the isolated don't. Um, but you had to talk about how matter was able to leave. And you could talk about the water cycle. You could talk about um, the fact that stuff was being dumped into it. You could talk about that it flows out into the Pacific Ocean. All sorts of stuff like that. 
Um, so one for identifying its open nature and one for justifying it. Um, okay, so using Le Chalier's principle, explain why Mercury concentrations. Okay, so there's several different ways to go through this. What we were actually looking for, but it's not all we took, was basically one for identifying that they were going to diffuse into the Pacific Ocean. It's a bay, so it goes out. Um, and one for relating this to Le Chalier's principle, which then causes a decrease in mercury ions over time as it is flushed out. And that actually relates to our indigenous usages or uses of um, chemistry and understanding the equilibrium system as well. All right, so that's the paper gone through. Uh, if you're just watching this because you like to see how papers are done, gold. Um, but if you're watching this because you're in our classes, you will get an individualized um, response to your paper sent out to you directly. And yeah, so that was the paper. Hope that made sense. If you have any questions, um, put them in the comments or send us an email, particularly if you're a student. And yeah, we'll see you next time. Bye now.